Hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Alex Williams and I'm going to be doing this short brief tutorial on how to animate a flag waving in Maya. We're going to make a flag wave and this is a tutorial which is designed at complete beginners in Maya. So we will go through some of the basic steps in Maya. Um, now the first thing you need to know how to do is this is the, this is the basic screen that, that, that greets you when you open up Maya. So the first thing you want to know how to do is how to dolly move and zoom. So Alt, hold down the Alt key with your left mouse button, uh, sorry, with your left thumb, Alt with your left thumb, and then with your left mouse button in your right hand, see if you can dolly. That's how we uh, dolly around the grid. Uh, now go to your uh, right mouse button, and you should be able to move, and to your middle mouse button, you should be able to zoom. So those are the three things that you should be able to do in Maya. As long as you can dolly, move and zoom, you're fine. Now the other thing you need to be able to know how to do in Maya is to create a simple object and adjust it. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go to create polygon primitives. Make sure that interactive creation is turned off. And let's just go ahead and create a cube. So there's our cube. It comes in small. If I press F, then that will focus in on the cube. And there are three things that we can do with this cube. I'm now zooming out, by the way, by going Alt, right mouse button. If you press this button here, that is the move button. And I can move this cube around. And I can also press Z to undo what I've just done. In Maya, Z is your friend. You're going to use this often. You can also rotate the cube by pressing, by, by selecting one of these little um, controllers here and rotating it using this rotate tool in the X, Y, and Z axes. And the third thing you can do is use the scale tool, and by selecting these little handles here, you can scale it and make it a different shape. So those are the three basic controls that you can use in Maya to uh, uh, move an object, rotate it, and scale it. So let's go ahead and drag select. By drag selecting, I mean drawing a little imaginary box around the object with my mouse button and pressing delete on our keyboard to get rid of the object. And what we want to do is um, create a project and then make a flag. So to create a project in Maya, you go Maya, project window, new. And I'm gonna call this, I'm gonna name this project and I'm gonna call it Xmas flag. Actually, well, no, we're not, it's, um, let's just call this flag wave. How about that? flag wave, because we're going to make a flag wave. And um, then we're going to go accept. And the next thing you want to do is set to your project. So you then go file, set project. And we're going to now file, find our Maya project. Now I've got a lot of Maya projects in here. Uh, you should only have one if you're a complete beginner. There's my flag wave. So I just single click to select it and click set. Um, and now I've created a project and I've set to it. So uh, the next thing we're going to want to do is to uh, create a flag. So let's go ahead and go create polygon primitives plane. And let's open up the options box. That's this little um, button here, create polygon primitives uh, plane. That little box there is called the options box. And it's called the options box because it gives you options. So let's go to Edit, Reset Settings to take everything back to the factory settings, as it were. And we're going to type in width for 15. This is grid units, by the way, 15 grid units. And height is 10. And divisions, we're going to want 40 width divisions and 30 height divisions. And that should create something that's vaguely flag-shaped um, and also will allow us to... Or give us enough um, subdivisions, enough vertices, so that the simulation works properly. And I'm now going to go Create. And I've got a little flag. There it is. Kind of looks like a flag. Now, right now, I'm in the Scale tool. But I want to be in the Rotate tool. That's this one here. That's also E on my keyboard. And I want to rotate it 90 degrees like that, so that it's standing upright. But what I want to do, I just press Z there to undo it, is if I hold down the J key, when I do this rotation, it will snap to the grid so that when I rotate it, it now rotates at a, at a perfect 90 degree angle. And here, under, instead of this thing being called P-plane 1, I'm just going to call it flag. 
So give it a nice, uh, a proper name. And then, um, so I'm just going to leave it there for now. Now you'll notice it's black on the um, back side. So if I go lighting, two-sided lighting, that will change. So make sure you, you select two-sided lighting there under the lighting tab. Now, we've created a flag, but we need to find a texture uh, to make it look like a real flag. So I'm going to go ahead and find that online. So let's go to Google. I've just opened up a new browser. Let's go to Google and let's find ourselves a flag. And we want a JPEG to download. So I'm going to look for J flag JPEG and I'm going to look under images. Uh, and I'm going to pick, uh, it doesn't really matter what image we used. Here's a, um, uh, a British flag. Let's right click, uh, save image as. And we now want to navigate by default uh, Windows will navigate to your Downloads folder, but we want to navigate to Maya. So let's go to Documents. I'm double-clicking here. Maya, double-click, double-click on Projects. Now, I've got loads of projects, but you probably won't. Uh, let's go to Flag. There we go, Flag Wave, double-click there. Source Images, and that's where we want to drop it. So Flag UK, we want it saved as a JPEG. That's great, and we'll save it in that folder. So now let's minimize that window, go back to the object, uh, back to our flag. And we now need to assign a material, a shader, uh, on which to attach the, um, uh, uh, the JPEG. So I'm going to right click, assign favorite material Lambert. I'm not sure if you can see that. I think you probably can't. Whoops. I just by mistake changed it to object mode, uh, vertex mode. So let's go back to object mode. Um, and let's go right click, assign favorite material Lambert. There we go, that's on the screen. So a Lambert, this is named after a Swiss mathematician called Lambert, I believe, very clever chap. And you'll see it comes in as, uh, I think that's right, did it come in as Lambert 1? No, I don't think we created it because it's already a Lambert 1. Let's try that again. Right click, add favorite material, Lambert. Okay, this is coming as Lambert 3. That's fine. We'll call it, we're going to call it Flag Lambert. And press Enter. And then I'm going to go to the, you'll see there's a little color stripe down here. So I'm going to click on the checkered flag here and click on File in this Create Render Node window. File. And then we, you'll see it creates a little yellow folder here. So I'm going to click on that and then navigate to, it should automatically, assuming we've set our project correctly, it should automatically take us to the source images folder. So if I click on flag UK and click open, we should now have a flag. Now it doesn't look very good yet, uh, but we can fix that relatively quickly. So we've got our flag, but it's obviously not looking right yet and we need to fix it. So I'm going to click here on the channel box um, and then go to this button here, which is the two panel split. So if I click on that and then I'll just draw this over here. So we've got two roughly equal size panels and then go panels, panel, UV editor. Now what we can do here is select the object by clicking on it and you'll see here all the little UVs which are sitting uh, on top of the flag. Um, and what we can do is go ahead and right click UVs and drag select them. And then what I'm going to do is use the scale tool to extend this and then the move tool just to move it up a little bit. The idea is we want to cover the image back to the scale tool. And let's see what that looks like. Uh, okay, great. So that's good enough. That looks about right. Uh, and we're starting to get something that looks like a flag. So now if I right click on it and go back to object mode, I can select the flag. Um, so, now that we've done that, we can go ahead and do the next bit, which is to apply the cloth simulation to it. So I want to select the effects menu up here and go to N cloth, create N cloth. And that will create an N cloth node. And if I press play, 
you will see that my flag will now disappear. And the reason it's doing that is because uh, the end cloth automatically creates a gravity node which makes the cloth fall to the ground. Now that's fine, but we want our flag to stay in place, or at least the bit that would be attached to the flagpole. So we're going to have to pin that bit in place. So I'm going to right click, select vertex, and then let's go to panels, orthographic, front. Panels, orthographic, front. Let's press 6 on our keyboard for, for, for uh, texture mode. And I'm just going to drag select all these vertices down the left hand side. And then we're going to go back to end cloth. Uh, no, sorry, end constraint. And then we're going to go to transform constraint. Transform constraint. And now if I press play, you'll see that what will happen is the gravity will act on the flag, but not on the, um, uh, the vertices on the side there. So, now, the big thing we're missing, of course, is wind. So, in order to add wind, what we need to do is select the object and make sure we're in the Attribute Editor, that's this tab up here, <clears throat> and scroll through these various tabs until we get to Nucleus 1. Nucleus 1 is where the wind attributes are. And if you scroll down, you should find wind speed. So, if I change that to say 30 and press enter we should find that we start to get some wind if I press if I click on the gray background then it won't highlight the object anymore so there we go we've got some wind blowing um, and you have a flag waving in the wind now the next thing we're going to need to do is to render it out as a movie file so Let's go ahead and go to uh, the render options, um, which will enable us to render something out. Now, the render options aren't showing on this screen, so I'm just going to open this up, and that's the one we want, this little button there, the little clapper with the blue cog. And if I click on that, that's going to give us render options. Let me just resize that so it's back the way it was. So what we want to do is go to... Maya Hardware 2.0. This is one of the options that will allow us to render out a movie file. Now there's some stuff we need to look at. We need to look at the path where it's going to go and it's going to go into my Maya Projects FlagWave Images folder. So that's where we know we need to look for it. Um, we need to render it as an AVI. That's a movie file format. And we also need to name it. So let's call it FlagWave1. Um, name.ext uh, multi-frame, yes that's right and then let's scroll down here and we're not going to start at frame 1 because um, we want the, you, we need to wait for the simulation to get going so let's start at frame 100 and then maybe run it for let's say up till frame 200, that's 4 seconds that's probably enough to see how we get on uh, I'm going to render it from the perspective view. I'm going to render it at HD 540, which is a relatively low resolution version and should get me a quick result. Uh, uh, low resolution aspect ratio it should get me a quick result. So I'm now going to press close, go to the render tab up here, and then go render, batch render. And once I do that, I just have to wait. And you'll see down here it says rendering with Maya Hardware 2.0. And I'm now going to press pause on this video um, and wait till it renders. Now I can see that it says uh, rendering completed. Um, so now I know to go and look in my folder. And the first thing I'm going to do is go to the start button. You can't see this, but it's the standard start button you'll find in Windows 7. Um, and I will allow, then go to documents, which you can see, and that will open up a documents folder. So now I can go, uh, a, win uh, uh, a window that is, now I can go into documents, Maya, double clicking, projects, flag wave, double click and go to images, and there it is, flag wave one. I'm going to right click and open it with QuickTime, which is my favorite. Uh, playback and 
There we go. Now we've got a flag waving. Now obviously there's a lot we could do here to make this better. For example, for one thing, the background is completely black. Uh, but that's for a different video. I'm just going to loop this, view loop. Uh, but what you have done is you've gone from, in this video, you've gone from zero to hero. You, uh, I assume, knew nothing about Maya when you began because that's why you selected this video. And now you've got a bit of animation, and not just a bit of animation, but a finished movie file of your animation. Um, so thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to save your work. Go file, save scene as, and then name it. Um, uh, I'll call this flag wave two. And you're done.